is the cross where Jesus Welcome to Crossbound Ministries, where we are bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world, encouraging Christians and pointing sinners to the cross. Will you please pray about supporting our broadcast and ministry that gives us the ability to spread God's word. You can get involved by going to crossboundministry.com. Please welcome our preacher, Mike Sadler, as he brings us an important message from God's Word. Praise the Lord. Then praise the Lord. The cross requires cling to the one. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to our broadcast today. And I hope you're blessed by today's message. I'm going to preach about how God changes us from the old man to the new man, how he changes and makes and molds our heart and our part in that. And I call this changing by the glory of Christ. We'll be in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and we'll start in verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, the Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen to that. We still have liberty here in America. Wherever Jesus Christ is recognized as Lord, there is liberty. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We can still seek the face of God in the scriptures openly. Specifically, there we don't have a law against religion. Specifically, the freedom from the bondage of the law. We can literally meet in our church house, in our home. We can even go out on the street corner and preach, praise the Lord, if that's what God lays on your heart, and there needs to be more of that. Proclaiming the truth. You know, even on our Liberty Bell here in America is the verse Leviticus 25.10. And part of that verse says, proclaim liberty throughout all the land. Amen. Proclaim liberty. Now the Liberty Bell's got a crack in it. It's got some dings in it. And listen, if you're going to stand for the Lord, I don't believe that's by accident. That bell's got some dings and cracks and crooks in it. It's not by accident. Because if you're going to stand for God, you're going to get some dings and bruises and scars and hurts. But praise the Lord, you keep right on standing. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. As bad as we think it is here in America, in the church, you hear a lot of that in the church. And I'm not saying it's perfect. It's not great. But America is still a great nation. So as bad as we think it is in America, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, for all that are in authority, that we may lead, live a, lead a quiet and peaceable life all godliness and honesty. Now listen to this next verse very carefully. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Man, that's good stuff, isn't it? When we get on our knees and we pray and we fast and we ask God to intercede for our nation's leaders, for those people that have been appointed or elected in those positions, that God would bless them and point them in the right direction, and we choose to fast and to pray and to give thanks to God and make intercessions and supplications for those, the Bible says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. And that should be our goal, to want to please the Lord God Almighty. Now listen to what I'm about to say, and everybody in the church hear me. If we are not willing to do what God has commanded, then we have no right to complain. Mm, That stings even me, because I'll complain sometimes, look at this, look at that, but am I doing what the Lord Jesus Christ, what God Almighty said to do? Am I making supplications and prayers and intercession and those types of things for those men in those positions that God may lead and guide them as they lead our nation? 
Amen. Too often we get on our knees to pray and we pray for such selfish, meaningless, pointless things like, God, could I have greener grass or good weather or something like that? Instead of asking God Almighty for great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. So pray for the leaders of this nation, because I still have children growing up in this nation, and then I'm going to have grandchildren, and praise the Lord, I want them to grow up in a good, godly America. So let's pray for the leaders of this nation. And so in verse 18, it says, but we all with open face, beholding as in the glass, the glory of the Lord. Isn't that something? The glory of the Lord. Now, Moses got to see part of the glory of the Lord. In Exodus 34, 29, he got to see the hinder parts of God. He wanted to see the glory of God. And God said, you can't handle it. You can't see it. All you can see is my hinder parts. And let me tell you, you do not want to stand before a thrice holy God without being covered in the blood of Jesus because you will be annihilated because we are sinful human beings. Moses could not look upon God. God said, you can't stand to look at my front parts. But he said, you can look at my hinder parts. And God said, I will hide you in the cleft of the rock and place my hand upon you. And when I pass by, you can see my hinder parts. They're on Mount Sinai. But under the new covenant, we all have the privilege of beholding the glory of the Lord. What do I mean? I mean the glory of the Lord that changes your heart, that takes a sinful, dirty heart and turns it and changes it into glory. And the Holy Spirit moves in and it makes that person shine. Like when Moses, just from gleaming, just from taking a look, a glance at God's hinder parts on that mountain, when Moses came down off of that mountain, his face was shining for the Lord Jesus Christ, literally shining. His face was shining so bright that it scared the people. And let me tell you, when you're shining for the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be other people, even Christians, that are scared. Wait a minute, you're too sold out for God. What are you doing giving all that money? I wouldn't give that much. What are you doing doing this? What are you, you don't worry about that. You go on and you shine for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Because listen, when Moses came down off of that mountain, his face was shining for three days. The people were so scared to death of him that he, they, that he had to cover it up, put something over it. It was freaking them out, scaring them to death. And I can tell you that it's not changed to this day. If you are shining for the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be some that want you to cover that up. Don't cover it up. You let your light shine. And the next part of that verse says, are changed into the same image. And that's in verse 18, are changed into the same image. You know, a butterfly is a beautiful creation of the Lord. It most certainly is. But it doesn't start out that way. It starts out as an ugly, fat, slug-looking thing crawling around. It's nothing beautiful or majestic about it. It's just this fat little ball of pus crawling around. And there's a caterpillar, and that caterpillar can make a cocoon, and it can change it. And that is a beautiful picture of salvation, I think, how it, it takes this ugly uh, glob of nothing and turns it into this beautiful, majestic thing that flies. It is amazing. Well, a man found a butterfly cocoon one day, and excitingly, he, you know, he began looking at it and checking out as it metaphorced, metamorphosed into a, a small opening. And that man sat there and watched that butterfly struggle for a long time as it tried to poke a little hole through the cocoon and get through it. As it tried to force his big fat body through that little tiny hole. And then it seemed as the butterfly just stopped making any progress. It appeared it had no strength left, so the man decided, he said, you know what, I'll help that. I'm going to help it out. I went in the house and, and caught a pair of scissors and, and snipped the cocoon open, and the butterfly fell out on the ground, and uh, it emerged. It had a fat, swollen body and small, shriveled-up wings. And the man continued to watch the butterfly because he expected that any moment the wings would enlarge and expand, and that butterfly would fly away but neither happened it was never able to fly you know in the man's kindness he did not understand that the restricting shell of that cocoon and the struggle that was required for that butterfly to get out of it and that was God's design to squeeze that body 
through that little hole and it squeezes the fluid from the body into the butterfly's wings, which allows him his wings to blow up and he is able to fly and have freedom. There is a great moral in that story. Here it is. Don't mess up God's plans with your ideas. Don't mess up God's plans with your ideas. God may allow hardship before he allows you to soar like an eagle, in other words. See, he messed up God's plan. The plan was he had, that butterfly has got to be put through the squeeze before it can soar and fly majestically. So God may allow hardships before he allows you to soar like an eagle. In other words, put you through the squeeze to get the best out of you. Amen. And he'll do the same thing to a Christian many times. He'll greatly put the squeeze on them before he mightily uses them. You see, he pounds that clay to soften it so that he can make and mold it into what he would have you or me to be. You do not need to get formed, conformed to the image of Christ when all is well. In other words, you don't really get conformed to the image of Christ when everything is going good, when your account is full, when everyone's happy and healthy and wealthy. Hey, you're not really getting conformed to the image of Christ. God may allow sickness or brokenness or marriage problems or strife or a loss of a job or your house burned down in order to conform you into the image of Christ. Because when everything's going well, when you're on that mountaintop, there's not much changing in the clay. But when you're running into hard times and you think, Lord, is why is all this happening? And I just can't stand this. God is doing something in your life to make and mold you and get you ready for what he has for you. You see, we all want to claim that famous verse, Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles at with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord, that is a great verse. We all want to mount up with wings of eagles and fly, praise the Lord. We all want that, but we don't want to go through the squeeze first. But the squeeze is necessary that your wings can spread and you can soar for the Lord Jesus Christ. And God's going to allow some fiery trials in your life, just like he did in the Old Testament with those three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Talk about a fiery trial. Glory to God. Hallelujah. King Nebuchadnezzar told him, you're going to bow down to my statue, my golden statue. And if you don't, I'm going to throw you in the fiery furnace. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not going to do it. Our God is able to deliver us. And they, But they went on to say, they knew that God had the power, but they said, but if not, they knew that even if God did not choose to save them, they was not going to violate any law of God and praise the Lord. You need that in your life. Go ahead and make the decision before it ever comes up. I'm not doing that. I'm not going there. I'm not saying that when the decision is already made and the situation comes up, it is so much easier to deal with because you have already made the decision. And so they did get thrown in that fiery furnace. But the Bible says when King Nebuchadnezzar looked in there that there was a fourth man and the fourth was like the son of God and that the fire had no power over him. And let me just tell you, the Bible goes on to even say that the smell of smoke did not even get on their clothes. Amen. Talk about a fiery trial. Now, listen, that doesn't mean God's going to save you from every hurt and pain. God may allow the smoke to pass upon you. He may allow you to get touched, but know this, there's a great moral in that story that God, he is going to be there with you by your side through it all. And it, if he does allow you to get, get touched or hurt, it's to glorify him. You see, every time the church was persecuted, the gospel spread. Every time Satan tried to stamp the gospel out, it just spread it further. It was like throwing gas on the fire. And the next part of that verse, we're still in verse 18. The Bible says, from glory to glory. This marvelous transforming process takes place from glory to glory. This is from one degree of glory to another, you know, growing in the Lord. It is not a matter of instant change. Salvation is instant, you see, but sanctification is not. Sanctification is a process, that's God working, making, and molding you, and you growing in the Lord. 
And sometimes in, in some churches, if someone gets saved, people are so intent on shaping them to be conformed to their own image. You need to dress like me and talk like me and, and walk like me and eat where I go. Uh, and I'm not saying that's not a bad that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying you're not living to the Lord, but don't put all those expectations on them. Let God change their heart, and as their heart changes, their outward exterior appearance and attitude and behavior will also change because true change begins in the heart. So don't just try to make and mold them into your own image. You know, you let God work on them and let Him make and mold them into His image. And next part of that verse says, even as by the Spirit of the Lord, the power for that process comes from the Holy Ghost. The natural man does not desire the things of God. Amen to that. We do not. The natural man does not desire the things of God. There was a little girl in a Sunday school class, and this Sunday school teacher was a wonderful Sunday school teacher. She taught those kids. She loved those kids. She taught them about Jesus, and these little kids were about four, five, and six years old, and there was a small group of them. And this one particular Sunday, she was going to take her class into the big church for whatever reason. And so while well, they were in Sunday school, she explained to them why it's so important to sit still, to sit up and be quiet and be respectful while you're in big church. And so after she did that, she lined them up and they started walking to the auditorium. And just before they walked into the back doors of the auditorium, the school teacher stopped and asked and said, now, why is it so important for you to sit up straight and be quiet and sit still and a little girl threw her hand up. She said, I know, because people were sleeping. And that little girl, there's a lot of truth to that. The natural man does not desire the things of God. That little girl proved that the natural man doesn't desire the things of God. But more so, the Bible says in Romans 8, 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject of the law of God, neither indeed can be. Did you get that? The Bible says the carnal mind is enmity against God. Enmity means you're, it's an enemy. Your mind is an enemy of God. The flesh doesn't always manifest itself in, with wicked sins of witchcraft and other things like we would think. A lot of times in, in good Christian people, it starts in the heart. You see, people can't see that. They can't see maybe the malice or, or the unforgiveness or the things that you hold in your heart. So the flesh doesn't always just manifest itself in someone dressed in black wearing a shirt that says 666 with an upside down cross. No, it, you can have a, a, the best dressed per man or woman and they have the blackest heart you've ever seen. And that's what God sees is the heart. So the flesh doesn't always manifest itself like you would think. But see, it's in the heart. Just like the Bible says, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. And so that's what God cares about is the heart. So how do we continually change from glory to glory by the Spirit from one step of glory to the next, moving closer to the Lord Jesus Christ, growing in the Lord? The Bible says in Galatians 5, 16, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. When you walk in the Spirit, you will naturally not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When you walk in the Spirit, you will naturally push away the lust of the flesh. But it's the exact opposite. When you, when you walk in the flesh, when you fulfill the lust of the flesh, you will naturally quench the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. And the Bible says, don't quench the Spirit. Do not quench the Spirit. So how do we keep moving forward for the Lord? Walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And our life, our life should radiate that glory that's inside of us, our actions. Maybe we don't smile all the time. Maybe we are a little humbug sometimes. Maybe we had a bad day or a bad month. I understand that. 
But the truth is, our life, people should be able to see that as a whole. Hey, those people truly love the Lord. They truly are living for the Lord. They're not living for the next new car coming out or the next new phone or the next. No, these people really love the Lord and want to do his will. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 1, the next one says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... As we have received mercy, we faint not. We all have a ministry. We all, if you're saved, you have a type of ministry. God has called you to spread the gospel, man, woman, or child. If you are saved, he says, go, go and tell the gospel. Go and tell the good news. And let me tell you, God something laid something on my heart that was so convicted me. We all have this ministry, right? But listen, you personally, you and I have just as much and more responsibility than the disciples of Jesus Christ had. That's right. Amen. I said the disciples of Jesus Christ. You have more responsibility than they did because you have the whole entire complete word of God in your hands. Amen. Now that's convicting when I realize that, hey, I have just as much and more responsibility as the disciples of Jesus Christ. And you get discouraged sometimes. Discouragements will come. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9 says, persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed. Amen. And sometimes Here's something that's personal and something that's very convicting. Sometimes you may be your greatest discouragement. We don't want to hear that, but sometimes we are. I grew up in the country, and I always had a dog growing up, and I love those dogs. And we took care of them, give them a bath, and, and feed them. But, you know, them dogs would go out sometimes, and they would find something that had been dead for three or four days, and they would drag it up in the yard, and they would roll all in it, roll all over it. I never did understand that, and they'd stink to high heaven. Dogs love doing that. All dogs do it. And you wonder, what in the world are you doing? I just cleaned you up. Now, I want you to think about yourself, and you drag those sins up that you've thought about, And you go, and you are rolling all in them, and that smell's getting all over you. And God says, why are you doing that? I've already forgiven for you for it. It's under the blood, and you'll do everything in the world to discourage yourself. So be careful of that. Don't drag those sins up God's already forgiven you for. No matter what the discouragements may be, the encouragements are always greater. Amen? Always greater. And you know... God give us to do some great and mighty things here on this earth. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Can you believe that? God has given you a key that you can bind things in heaven right now, today, here on earth. You can bind things in heaven. But it also says that you can loose things in heaven. So be careful with your walk with the Lord. But today I ask you, have you ever gotten the key of salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ? I don't mean you said a little prayer. I don't mean you repeat it after somebody or you grew up in a pastor's home or preacher's home or missionary home and you got saved when you were seven, but you never truly got born again, you see. Because John six forty four, no man come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And that is the wooing and the drawing of the Holy Spirit and him convicting you, realizing that you're in sinner and need of a Savior and that you're going to bust hell wide open. It doesn't matter if you sit on a pew and you have a Bible on in your hand and a song on your lip. If you have never been born again, you'll slide right off that pew right into hell because there's never been a true change in your heart. And you know if that's had ever happened, because the Bible says that His Spirit gives our spirit assurance. Amen. So make sure that you know, that you know, that you know, that you have been born again. We pray you have been blessed by today's message. If you have been saved or greatly blessed by today's message, please contact us and let us know. 
Thank you for tuning into Crossbound Ministry Radio Broadcast. Will you please pray about supporting our ministry and broadcast? You can go to crossboundministry.com or send your support or a gift to P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. That's P.O. Box 7, Inverness, Florida, 34451. For a gift of $25 or more, we will send you a copy of Ray Comfort's book, Nothing Created Everything. Please pray for us as our ministry and radio broadcast grows. Tune in every Sunday morning at 8 8 a.m. to hear a message from our preacher, Mike Sadler. You can follow Crossbound Ministries on Facebook or visit us on the web at crossboundministries.com. This broadcast has been sponsored in part by Henley's Grading Incorporated and Hernando, Florida, 352-897-3507 and Lada Construction Incorporated for all your home building needs, 352-489-9069. This program is sponsored by Crossbound Ministry of Inverness, Florida.